Hi guys, this is Greg with Gortan Rifles. This video is to help with what you're going after building a dummy round for me building a chamber for your chambering into your barrel. Now it doesn't matter what caliber or what weight bullets you're using, all this applies from a 17 up to a 50. I don't care how you're prepping your brass, whether you're turning necks or not, doing primer pockets, Prep your brass the way you're going to prep it. Now I'm going to give you some language here like the heel of a bullet, the neck shoulder junction. I don't care what anybody else says. This just applies to building a dummy round. And we want the dummy round to also work through the magazine. So what we'll do here is I'll point out a few things and then we'll get rolling on this. Deb, scroll down to the bullets. Now, like I said, it doesn't matter if it's a 30 cal, 17, or a 50. On a flat base, this is the heel of the bullet. You stand it up on the table. That's the heel right there. On a boat tail, this is the base, and this is the heel where the bullet comes up to full bullet diameter. So guys, when I say the heel of the bullet, I'm talking full bullet diameter. Okay. The neck shoulder junction is right here. This is where the neck and the shoulder form a junction. Right there. I split a case open here just to show when I say, hey guys, seat the bullet so that the heel is just above the neck shoulder junction. This is what I'm talking about. Is seating the bullet like that. This is on a flat base. When I say seat the heel of the bullet on a boat tail, this is what I'm talking about right there. Now on a single shot gun, the chambering, it doesn't matter what your overall length is because you're loading it one at a time. It will matter, guys, for, uh, flop things around here, on a magazine. Now this is an OT6 and a standard magazine and that's what's great about like an OT6 270. Man, you can all the bullets you can buy, you can seat, and they will fit in the magazine, no problem. Let's say we're dealing with a 243, and we're using 117 grain bullets, and it, it fits like this. Well, we have to now sink the bullet into the neck to get it to feed. And so what do I look for? You always want at least 50 thousandths clearance from the nose of the bullet to the front of the magazine for throat wear. I prefer 100, that way you guys can try different bullets and as your throat wears, you can chase the throat um, and still feed through the action. Now, this is the optimum starting point for the chambering. If you seat the bullet there, the gun's going to shoot. It's just you've lost throat wear and chasing the throat. You know, let's say this is 100,000. So that's all I'm saying. This is the optimum starting point. So then as the throat wears, you can sit there and keep moving the bullet out and keeping with the throat. Now here what I did was I just cut open a factory barrel with an OT6 chambering. Why we're building these dummy rounds is because I'm building you a chamber. I cut the head space first, then I cut the neck diameter, meaning whether you've turned the necks or not, I measure across here, add two thousandths, and then I open up the neck diameter. Now, this is what I don't want because I won't know if it's a false fit on the case not fitting into the chamber or if the bullet is hitting the ogive, but I do not want a sized case out of a fat chamber. Virgin brass is preferable. I don't want to slide in and have the case stop, and let's say we had a bullet seated, and I take a reading and think that's what I have to throw forward from zero freeboard. What I want is a case that will slide, on, slide in and not hang up and give me a true reading that'll slide in and slide out. The reason is the dummy round is acting nothing more than a gauge. I want to know where this ogive contacts 
the lead in the chambering and then use the base of the case as a measurement. What we're making is a chambering gauge basically with the way you prepped your brass and seated your bullet. This cartridge slides all the way in, just touches the free bore. We have our clearance and head spaces. This chamber is cut for this cartridge right here. If we d did the same thing again, I'm getting repetitive. If we did that, a false reading, let's say now, well, it's, it's 100 thousandths. Well, let me take a, a first cut of 50 thousandths on the throat, slide it back in. Oh my gosh, nothing changed. Now all of a sudden, we have no idea where we are at. Right now, this free bore is not enough for this 220 grain Sierra. So I do this, now watch, here's the next shoulder junction, here's the heel, I'm sliding this in, right there I got contact on the throat and the case is going forward. If I took a measurement, because this case slides in and out, I would know, let's say this is 75,000, I have 75,000 to throat forward and it'll shove the bullet back if you watch. If I push the case, there's my difference to add freeboard to this chambering that we would have the heel at or just above the next shoulder junction. But everything will come in and out um, on this and give me true readings. Now what I go for is that the bullet doesn't slide I shove it in, I take a reading from headspace, and then to where I throat, let's say that was this, and then I get my reading. So when I get done chambering your barrel with your prep brass, we have zero headspace, we have a thousandths clearance on either side of the neck, and the ogive is just touching the bullet. I hope this answers the questions on what no. Deb? No primer, no gunpowder. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, don't put a primer in the back. Keep the primers out. This is a dummy round. That's what we want is dummy rounds. I can, this is a factory, I can chamber for factory ammo. Um, I can do it. But in building your dummy rounds, just send me a couple seated bullets, not cut open like this, to where if it'll work through your magazine, set at the next shoulder junction. From there, I can build you the chamber you want. You can touch the rifling, have all the proper clearances, and you'll be happy and so will I. Thanks much, guys. Greg Tano, Grutan Rifles.